Good day, good day everyone and once again we're back together. We are looking at organic chemistry and still looking at uh, the organic reactions actually. Um, so if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure that you're part of the family. And of course you can always uh, uh, join in as a member in this channel. All right and uh, benefit from our valuable perks right so uh in this case we're looking at the november 2022 exam right so let's get right into it okay so question four of this uh, says the flow diagram below shows how compound a can be used as a starting reactant to prepare two different compounds all right so what i like to do on these ones is I first like to analyze as much as I possibly can to see what type of uh, reactants we have and what kind of products we have, right? So they've given you a compound there. And by the way, please just note, when you've got uh, CH3 in brackets like that, that tells you that they, they are actually forming a, uh, a branch there, right? So you've got something that looks like this, CH3. You've got C with a CH3 branch, okay? And you've got a bromide there, bromide ion, okay? And you've got CH2. So there's our CH2 as well as our CH3 at the end, right? So definitely a haloalkane, right? And in this case, uh, we now take the hello alkane uh, through reaction one, okay? And can you see what we form there? We form an alkene, right? How do I know it's an alkene? It follows the general formula CNH2N. Our N value is five, okay? And of course, uh, we've got uh, uh, 10 hydrogens in that case. So what happened? So it means that we now have actually gotten rid of the bromide ion, right? And it means that obviously we can't just get rid of it only, okay? Uh, it means that it would have, um, you know, uh, 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 you know, you would have removed it together with the hydrogen, right? It would have been accompanied by hydrogen in this case. So uh, this is an elimination reaction, definitely. But the question is now, which carbon uh, or which hydrogen are we going to eliminate? This one or this one on the other side, right? So remember, this is where you are going to use Zaitsev's rule, right? We're going to actually eliminate the hydrogen from the carbon that has a lesser number of hydrogens. So that means that uh, if we're going to eliminate there, we're going to eliminate this one and uh, together with the bromide and as a result form a double bond. So what we would be looking at on that side uh, would be something that looks more or less like this. We still have the methyl side chain there and uh, we've, we'll have the double bond over there and there we go. So if everything else stays exactly as it is, right? So um, so we formed a double bond and alkene. So what type of reaction uh, would reaction one be? Definitely an elimination reaction. So this is where, ladies and gents, I want you to remember. So we would normally react this uh, with concentrated uh, a concentrated strong base so we can take uh, concentrated sodium hydroxide of course in the presence of mild heat in this case right right and then let's look at uh, reaction uh, two uh, what seems to happen there is that you take that alkene and you form another compound there it it looks like i've added a uh, two hydrogens as well as an oxygen so that definitely is uh, reacting it with h2o do you see that so you had c5h10 but you reacted with uh, h2o in this case so that means that we formed an alcohol there right so uh, we would have an alcohol of course uh, when you react there we are going to use 
uh, Makonikov's rule, right? We say, well, um, we know we're going to add the H. That's an addition reaction. We're going to add H and OH, right? So that means that the H, the hydrogen, tends to go to the uh, carbon that has the most number of hydrogens, right? So if I look at this, um, I would actually take the hydrogen uh, to this one here. So I would end up with, okay, remember we still have that uh, methyl group there, that's CH3, right? But the hydrogen, I am going to add to this guy here. Okay, so I would have the hydrogen over this one here. Okay, and of course, that means that the hydroxide ion would go to the one, the second one, right? Because remember, Makonikov's rule says we take the hydrogen to the carbon with the most number of hydrogens, right? So this one had only one. Um, uh, I mean, the one on the right had only one, and the one on the left has had uh, uh, no hydrogens, right? Okay, so now um, that means reaction three, we took that haloalkane and we reacted, or rather we form an, an alcohol. So in that case, we take a dilute strong base again, right? So instead of a concentrated strong base, we use a dilute strong base in this case, and that means that we're going to form, okay, uh, uh, that alcohol over there. Right, ladies and gents, please, it would be very nice for you to familiarize yourself with these type of reactions. Okay, now let's uh, go on ahead. Let's try and answer the questions that follow. Now, they say to us, is compound A a primary, secondary, or tertiary haloalkane? Give a reason for the answer, right? So, remember, um, I've kind of drawn it there, right? So, the carbon that has the halogen, right? Note is surrounded by three other carbons. So that's one, two, and three. So that would make that a tertiary haloalkane, right? And we would state exactly that reason that the carbon that has the functional group uh, uh, is has three carbons around it. So that would be a tertiary. So that would be a tertiary, okay? A uh, hello alkane, right? Um, right, and then you would explain there. Okay, I'm just lazy to write it down. So the carbon that has the functional group has three other carbons around it. Okay, right, and then they say consider reaction one. They say besides heat, okay, uh, write down the other reaction condition needed. Okay, we've already written it down. What is that reaction condition? We said a concentrated strong base. Concentrated strong base. Okay. And uh, we can actually just write the sodium hydroxide. Okay. Right. And they say to us, write down the type of reaction that takes place. We did mention there that the type of reaction that takes place uh, is an elimination reaction, right? So that would be an elimination reaction. Okay. Uh, elimination. Okay. Right. Uh, we continue there. Okay. So uh um you can also state that it's a dehydrohalogenation okay that is a type of uh, uh i mean elimination reaction that it is right and they say to us using structural formulae for for organic for the organic compounds write down a balanced equation for the reaction okay so we said what we have there we've got um so we've got, so there's our halogen over there. Well, uh, let's start with the side chain, actually. 
Okay, sorry, I've just drawn this in a not so nice way. Right, and we've got our halogen there, which is our bromide. Okay, so there we've got something that looks more or less like this. Okay, right, and what do we do? We are reacting it with concentrated sodium hydroxide. Okay, uh, so that would be concentrated sodium hydroxide. Or what you can do is just show that on the arrow there, right? So instead of writing it down, uh, what I can do is I can just show it uh, in this manner. Okay, so that would be concentrated sodium hydroxide. Okay, and what I have on the other side Remember, we said it's an elimination reaction. So I would still have my reaction, uh, my hello, I'm um, sorry, my side chain over there. Okay. And now I've removed, totally eliminated the bromide as well as the hydrogen uh, from the carbon that is next to it. And because it's a major product, we said we follow uh, Zaitsev's rule, right? Uh, please make sure that the number of hydrogens and carbons, okay, sorry that I didn't really draw that nicely. Okay, uh, please make sure that it does actually correspond, right? There should be only four carbons, uh, I mean, four uh, hydrogens around, I mean, um, four bonds around each carbon uh, atom, right? Okay, so maybe let me make some space for this one. So you've got the hydrogen there. Okay, and now what we've got is we've got sodium hydroxide. And remember, now that we've formed sodium, uh, uh, I mean, uh, you, you took sodium hydroxide and that hydrogen bromide, what you would have there is you would form sodium bromide and you would have H2O uh, being formed as a result. All right, so please remember that is how you would actually write down that formula, right? Uh, um, obviously in structural form. All right, now let's go on to the next one, okay? So they say consider the re uh, reaction two, right? So remember for reaction two, what did we do? We took uh, the, um, the alkene and we reacted it with water, all right? Uh, that's a hydration reaction, isn't it? So they say to us, write down the structural formula of compound C, right? So in this case, we're looking at compound C, what we would have formed. So in this case, where we had the bromide initially, we now substitute that with, uh, um, you know, the hydroxide ion. So this is what it would look like okay so there we've got our four carbons so where we had the bromide we are now going to have oh okay we've got hydrogen hydrogen and hydrogen there okay and we've got remember we had that ch3 there okay all right and uh, uh of course we put everything else where it actually belonged. Okay, right. So uh, this is what we would have. So we added H on the one uh, hydrogen, on the one carbon rather, and OH on the other. And of course, we used in this case to, uh, for the addition reaction, we used uh, Makonikov's rule. So this is 4.3. Point one, Right, that they say to us, write down the name or formula of the inorganic reactant that is needed, right? So remember to form that, what did we use? We used water, right? So they said either write down the name, okay? Or the formula in this case would just simply be H2O, okay? Right, now they say to us the type of addition reaction that takes place so we already know that it's an addition reaction so the type that it is in this case is going to be uh, hydration okay 
So that's a hydration reaction there. Right, so then we move on to 4.4 quickly, right? So for 4.4, what are we looking for? Right, so we are now looking at reaction 3 that we spoke about in this case where we took the dilute sodium hydroxide. Okay, please remember those reactions, ladies and gents. Okay, they say write down the type of reaction uh, that takes place, right? So I want you to note in this case that uh, what we did was to substitute the bromide ion with uh, the uh, hydroxide ion. So we can say that this is a substitution reaction. Okay, so that is substitution. Okay, um, that's 4.4.1. Okay, right. Um, they usually call this type of reaction hydrolysis, right? Um, notice there's a difference between hydration and hydrolysis, right? Um, so they say besides heat, write down the other reaction condition needed. So we say that it must be in the presence of a dilute strong base. So dilute strong base, okay, right. Hope that makes sense. So that sodium hydroxide, or you can take potassium hydroxide in that case. And essentially, ladies and gents, that is how the cookie crumbles. You would have earned yourself 15 marks. And uh, um, I know that uh, you, you know, sometimes they find, we find these uh, reactions kind of intimidating but please remember uh, they kind of like these reactions where we've got sodium hydroxide and so on because they test quite a lot of uh, uh, things in uh, you know your knowledge of uh, uh, of organic reactions okay right so we'll look at another video all right in uh, uh, of course i will publish it uh, in the next few hours uh, otherwise i will see you guys again next time don't forget to subscribe and like and I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.